Hey guys, this is Old Time Radio, and uh, this is the last part of uh, of our tutorial on um, how to get animations into Neverwinter Nights. Um, as uh, you'll recall, we started out here um, using Infinity Explorer to export some uh, animations from Planescape Torment into an animated GIF, and then we use GIMP to uh, to modify that and then glue it to take the individual frames and put them back together and then re resized it to come up with our sprite sheet okay so by now there really shouldn't be anything that's off limits to you as far as animation goes why because number one you understand the uh, the role that gimp plays okay in making those layers a uniform size and then saving them out and you understand the role that glue it plays in turning those into a sprite sheet okay these two are key okay now that you know how these are done you don't have to just stop at animated gifs anything where you're able to to grab frames uh, of any sort you can go put it through the same process if you use a program like image grabber 2 free to download you can grab images or i should say frames from a video instead of from an animated GIF. So any way that you can get a hold of frames of anything, you now have the knowledge to be able to turn those into animations. And really, it's not just whatever videos of Stonehenge that I have here. What I'm talking about is, for instance, looping um, video, seamlessly looping video. Uh, you can very handily grab frames of, lots of cool settings here, grab frames of, and I believe this might even allow you to make your own sprite sheets with it. Play around with it. I didn't have too much time to go into this. But again, there pretty much isn't a moving image now that you're not able in some fashion to rip out, glue back together, and get running as an animation in Neverwinter Nights. Okay? So that's that's a lot of power. Um, now, uh, we're going to talk just really quickly about um, the, the benefits and drawbacks of using a TGA with a TXI on a mesh or an emitter, okay? And emitters have kind of come out uh, ahead of the game so far when I've been speaking about them because they have lots of control. Um, in fact, um, one of the things that I wanted to briefly touch on is that these settings, like the size and the birth rate, those things are animatable. Now keep your eye on this part of the screen as I scrub the animation slider back and forth. That's right. Just in the same way that you can animate something uh, over, uh, animate something's movement over the course of time, you can also animate these settings over time. Okay, and uh, take a look here at the key filters. If you want to do that, um, instead of position or rotation keys, you're going to have object parameter keys, and that'll allow you to lay down these different um, types of keys. And that's super handy. Now, the big drawback for the um, emitter is that it is a node. It is a model, uh, essentially, that's got to be attached to a, an Aurora base, just like everything else. Um, so anything that contains an emitter like this has got to physically be edited and have uh, the emitter node added to it. Uh, you can sort of get around this a little bit by uh, converting it into a VFX and the, uh, the VFX can be applied to the player. I mean, the, 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 the Aurora base and everything is still in play. It's just a handy way to allow you to, you know, throw another model essentially onto the player, uh, and that's what the VFX are. So you can kind of get, get away with that a little bit, but there are some limitations that TXIs or TGAs with the TXIs really shine at. Remember, the TGA with the TXI, there's TGA, TXI, there's no mention of the model. It's because the, the mesh necessarily, or yeah, it really isn't important. Obviously, you have to have a mesh that it's mapped onto, but the real power here is the TGI, TGA, TXI combo. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the, the workplace with the skeleton chief and, an, and a book icon and a, and, a, and a helmet and a shield. Okay, now all I've done is I've take the exact, taken the exact same sprite sheet, right? The same sprite sheet here, and I've renamed it to various bits of this scene. So, for instance, uh, this is the skeleton's torso. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this in-game. 
Now, uh, it won't be perfectly mapped on the skeleton because of the way that the UV mapping is set up, but the point is, is that, sure enough, the animation can be a part of a character, if you like, or I should say at least, a part of a creature like this. I'll show you a little bit more in a sec when we take a look at the helmet, which is next. Keep an eye on this, by the way. Okay, again, this is the exact same sprite sheet. All I have done is just renamed the sprite sheet to be the name of something that's currently used in game and uh, renamed the TXI to be something that's currently used in game. Uh, let's take a look at the helmet now. Now, the key thing to understand about Neverwinter Nights, uh, this game, is that everything in here, pretty much, is a texture on a 3D object. Even if the object does not look 3D, you can pretty much count on the fact that it is in fact a texture mapped onto a 3D object. This is where the TGA TXI combination shines. Okay, so um, let's take a look at our helmet. This was a green helmet and you'll notice it's green and sure enough, it's cycling. Yep, because it just works like that. Okay, now again, the UVW mapping is, is, is not right on the helmet, so it's not going to display our animation real pretty, but we could actually make a helmet like this and, um, uh, to show off the effect, and it would work just fine. Okay, now I'm going to show you another thing by hitting escape here, exit to main menu, and that's when we change the logo, we also, um, <laughs> we also replaced this part of the GUI. In fact, this is a, an image mapped onto a 3D model. This is an image mapped onto a 3D model. All of these things are images mapped onto 3D models. They're just planes, just like we were dealing with. They're very thin, but they're still 3D models. And then we can replace the texture on them, just like we did with the others. And uh, Neverwinter Nights is really good about uh, taking that TGA and running with it if there's a TXI to tell it how to be controlled. <clears throat> okay, so now let's do the shield. And uh, one of the great things about this is that the shield is uh, has an environment map, which you can really clearly see. An environment map is just another uh, is sort of texture that's applied to a model, uh, typically supposed to be like reflecting the environment, okay? So sure enough, no problem doing it with a shield. Okay. And uh, now the reason, of course, why we don't see this is that uh, we haven't changed the image uh, uh, for the shield. This is an icon image. Um, and what we actually uh, changed was the texture on the shield itself. Now, get a good gander at this. You can actually see the environment map on here, and it'll move around. Like, it, it's, it's a nice, beautiful effect. Um, and uh, so the alpha from the... Um, Animation just lets that environment map show through. It's pretty cool. Okay, but we're not going to stop there. We want to push and see how far we can go. Uh, the next thing is, okay, well, you saw on the shield the, um, you saw on the shield that the inventory icon for it was unchanged. And that's, of course, because we didn't change the inventory, or, yeah, we didn't use the sprite sheet as the inventory icon. But what if we did? What if we took, say, a book and we um, changed the 2D icon for that? Well, sure enough, that's right. It's the inventory icon is a is a is a is a te texture wrapped on a 3D model, just like everything else. And so you when you pick it up. You see that, and this guy can hang out in your inventory forever. This is great. Imagine doing potions like that, animated potions, okay? Now, we got one last thing, and I think I'm getting real close to my time limit here, so I want to hurry up, but again, all I'm doing is taking the same sprite sheet, and I'm just renaming it. Um, there really is uh, little in the way of limits that I've found, as you saw with the helmet. Um, it was tinted green, just like the helmet, and yet the animation still played underneath it. Gives you a lot of options. Okay, I've replaced the grass now 
with <laughs> our sprite sheet and sure enough like everything else it seems to work just freaking perfectly okay so have a lot of fun with this um i hope you enjoy it experiment for god's sakes and uh and upload your creations to the vault so that i and everybody else can enjoy them thanks